Good, good for the heavyweight, heavyweight division, correct? Yeah, that's heavyweight. And then we have finally um, a fighter that's not unlike Mariette Gassiev, a heavyweight, uh, Philip Hergovic, who kind of signed with DAZN when DAZN was willing to spend money. And now it's two years later and he's fighting on one of these lesser seen cards. I don't know the broadcast distribution deal, but it's kind of like two years later, you're no longer this, the shiny new toy prospect we thought we had. Now you're just kind of, we're trying to get you to that ROI fight. Let's return on the investment. Let's get you to the point where you can make money just kind of strange to see how some of these prospects are turning out in the DAZN world because DAZN made such a major splash in the marketplace. And now uh, some of these prospects were kind of going, well, what is the Hergovic fight? Like, what is it? Because it doesn't look like he's going to get a Joshua fight. It doesn't look like he's going to get a Fury fight. It doesn't look like he's going to get a Wilder fight. So is he going to try to get, I don't know, Yoka? Is that the fight? Is it Joe Joyce? Yeah. I know Michael Hunter feels kind of frustrated because Michael Hunter fought on the same cards as him. And now they want to fight Michael Hunter. And he's like, what gives? I fought on the same cards as him. You should have matched me when we were on the same cards. So I think it's very with the frustration with the heavyweight division being so top heavy. Yeah. It, it kind of leads these guys like Hergovich, who is a top 10 level fighter. He's in this no man's land. Yeah. Like you, like you said, I mean, uh, um, there's not, um, the zone is, is is kind of responsible for getting these guys a lot of these guys out there and visible and um, a lot of people don't know who they are um, and it does give the impression that the heavyweight division is indeed top heavy um, and but you know uh, like you say the zone made a big splash when they came onto the scene I think I did I think I covered the first ever the zone US card um, and that was a big splash uh, uh you know, uh, they're still trying to figure things out, I think. And, um, but I will say this, I think that, um, their model and their strategy, I think they've proven that they're not here just for the, uh, short term. I mean, I think they're hoping to be here as long as they can possibly be here. And I'm, I was kind of surprised to see them survive the pandemic. They did. They're still here. And, um, you know, th th I think they're doing a decent enough job of trying to fill the void left, the giant void left by HBO. Um, yeah. What do you think? Uh, what I think is I think they followed up on the Lomachenko's and the Golovkin's of the world. And they kind of were the 2.0 of that bringing in like the Eastern Europeans are coming. The British are coming. They were filling that void and now it's like they're in need of their new superstars. They're in need of the new guys. They're in need of Virgil Ortiz or they're in need of the Devin Haney's to really take the reins and help them into this next decade. Yeah, you're right. Because a network is only as good as its biggest star, right? Um, or stars, um, just like HBO and Tyson, just like Showtime and Mayweather. Um, and I do believe that the zone was really hurt, uh, in 2018 when, uh, it was supposed to be the Canelo triple G was it 2018, 2019, uh, the rubber match, right. That's something that the whole boxing program at the zone was hoping to, um, you know, that that was the fight that was supposed to push them over the edge. Um, and, uh, it never happened. And I think they've struggled ever since. Um, and, uh, doesn't look like it ever will happen. Well, I mean, I think what I'm learning is with these streaming services, it's like the zones, the shiny new toy. So we go, Oh, the they're going to save us. Then Triller comes, they're going to bring, bring rap concerts to boxing. So they're going to save us. And then something else will come and they'll bring this. It just seems in the advent of streaming, whatever the newest streaming service is, we're going to cling to that when it's going to be. Yeah boxing as usual it's just that's the new trend so i think for the zone the big issue is how do they handle not being the most new and relevant boxing programming when things like triller are coming around trying to reinvent themselves yeah i mean true i mean again it's uh it's 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 like we just like i talked about a few minutes ago is 
these all these things are so new that we don't know how it's going to end up. <laughs> we don't we don't we don't know. I mean, um, um, but the zone has been around now for three years. At least it, it looks like they're starting to grow some roots. Um, and uh, and trailers brand new, new kid in the block. We'll see how it goes there. But um, it's definitely a new era. And we kind of knew when HBO went out of the picture. What in 20. 20- 18 something like that. I was that. at a Devin Haney fight when it happened. I can tell you the exact fight I was at, but I might not tell you the date. I think it was 2018. And uh you know, that was a huge void. We knew it was going to be, we knew it was going to be a free for all uh in terms of who would be the new uh you know, the new giant amongst the boxing networks and I don't know that anybody has really I mean obviously there's there's showtime um, uh, which definitely has the best production, um, and, um, you know, probably the best announcing team, um, or among them. Um, I think they had an opportunity to kind of move above everybody else, but didn't. Um, so I think that, I think the free for all is just continuing. I agree. And that's a great place to conclude. I think 